my name is Sabrina. I'm uh, born and raised in Montreal, Quebec. Uh, I come from a very tight-knit family. Um, I have one sister uh, who's two years older than me. I would say that my upbringing was uh, a semi-religious one. Um, I did spend a lot of time with my grandmother on my father's side growing up, and uh, she was a religious woman. Uh, we used to go to church on Sundays, um, had catechism classes, so we did our, you know, the baptism, the first communion, the confirmation, and you know, prayed daily. Uh, so yes, I would say my upbringing was a semi-religious one. Um, I do have a lot of um, memories from my childhood, uh, you know, of course, like celebrating um, Christmas and Easter. Uh, there was always like, you know, the, the Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny aspect of those holidays. And then you also have the, the more religious uh, view of those holidays as well. And, you know, I, um, our family, we did celebrate the, the more religious views of those holidays. Um, and I do have a lot of fond memories of, you know, praying uh, with my grandmother, um, you know, praying for our relatives that have passed away, um, also praying the rosary as well. Um, I would say that I did um, happily identify myself as a Catholic at the time. Um, we, we did read the Bible, um, you know, we learned it in, in church on weekends, um, but I would say that I identified myself as a Catholic quite happily, um, you know, um, my relationship um, with, you know, uh, Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, you know, as a Catholic was, was a pretty strong one at the time growing up. Um, I would say that daily prayers were absolutely important. Um, you know, I couldn't go to sleep without, you know, praying that night or else I would have like a guilty conscience. It just became like a, a habit that I had since, you know, as I grew up, even as I became, you know, a little bit more distant from the religion and, you know, didn't attend church every Sunday um, as I got older. Um, but I did always pray. It, that is something that I always kept uh, as a daily thing. Um, my views of Islam uh, prior to converting, um, I was... I was a teenager, of course, at the time, so I didn't really have uh, a lot of knowledge of, you know, different religions. Uh, I would just, you know, the media did influence a lot of my opinion. Uh, I was quite ignorant to the religion and what it stood for and, you know, what Islam really was. Um, I just felt like it was something really foreign. Um, of course, I had, uh, you know, all the misrepresentations of the religion. I did have a negative view towards it uh, based on the media and all the events that had happened. Um, you know, for example, like, you know, the events of 9-11, you know, right away you see like this is a, you know, Islam is labeled on this type of thing. So when someone's ignorant of the religion, you're going to look at an event like that and say, well, why would the religion condone this? You know, why would Muslims condone this? Um, so for sure I did have a negative view, you know, which was of course all misrepresented, but I did have a negative view of Islam prior, um, you know, as a teenager. My quest for Islam really began when my grandmother passed away um, because she was, you know, the main part of me, you know, of the, you know, all the religious aspects of my life growing up. When she had passed away, I was a teenager and, you know, like most teenagers, I was very, um, you know, I, I did pray every night, of course, but I, I was very distant from the religion at that time. And, you know, when she had passed away, it was, it was almost as though, like, um, the same way, you know, you get into a car accident and you don't really ask for it, it's like it forces you to wake up because we're always postponing, you know, those thoughts of, you know, what, what's after life, what is the purpose of life. And when you're a teenager, that's the last thing on your mind. You know, even though you might have, you know, spiritual feelings towards, you know, religion and God, uh, of course you're going to, you know, you're too busy with your, your social life and such things. Whereas when she passed away, I felt like it just forced me to wake up and, and look at my life from outside of the box. And, you know, I was you know, ashamed with what my life was at that time. And I felt that, you know, I should be reflecting, you know, in action what is in my heart, you know, because I did have, you know, a huge, you know, you know, spiritual side that I felt that I was always neglecting at the time. I came across the Holy Quran, um, not necessarily like uh, in a specific event, of course, um, when I had decided I was wanting to learn more about different religions and learn about Islam in particular, um, of course, I did look to, you know, the Quran. I, I did a lot of online research where, of course, you see a lot of, you know, good and bad, of course. So I did prefer books at the time. Um, I was given an English version of the Quran, and um, this was all prior to me converting, I would say, a good year, a year and a half prior. Um, and, of course, I read it, you know, front to back. And yeah. <laughs> The particular verse that I would say that inspired me in the Quran um, was, uh, you know, the fact that there is a whole chapter named Miriam, uh, of course, 
you know, as you know, coming from a Catholic background, you're like, oh, this is so familiar to me, you know, and then everything that, you know, the specific verses that talk about uh, the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, uh, of course, that, you know, resonated with me, you know, coming from a Catholic background and, and the, the concept of Jesus, I would say, you know, once I learned that from the Quran, I felt that it totally changed my whole aspect, you know, the, my whole view of being a Catholic was totally shattered uh, after reading uh, Surah Miriam. My view of hijab prior, uh, prior to learning about Islam, um, I would see uh, Muslim women wearing it, I would assume that they were, you know, either forced to wear it or, you know, that it was some sort of, you know, written in stone rule that, you know, it's like maybe they didn't want to wear it but they felt that they had to as Muslims. So 